Kirby Saunders, Emergency Management Coordinator for Orange County, North Carolina. So the North Carolina National Guard is supplying logistical personnel to support our COVID response here in Orange County. Uh, primarily that is in regards to a couple of different mission areas. One being our scarce resources uh, management. So that is right now scarce resources are gloves, gowns, masks, and uh, primarily any equipment needed for the healthcare infrastructure in our community. Uh, the logistical support in behind that is the receiving and distribution of those scarce resources here at our main warehouse in Hillsboro. Uh, uh, secondary mission to that is the or organization of donated non-perishable food items. So currently Orange County is operating a bulk receiving or donation receiving sites uh, in, three, in two locations throughout the county three times a week. So Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, there are two sites that are collecting non-perishable food items from the community. Um, and those items need to be brought back to a central location to be sorted, inventoried, and stored for future distribution purposes. Our intention for those is for them to go uh, to the nonprofit organizations that are currently conducting feeding operations in our community. The feed on, feeding operations right now are, are supporting the existing uh, food insecure uh, areas in our community and residents that are food insecure as well as the growing need that is becoming ever increasing uh, week by week of the population that needs feeding assistance. So that's a really important mission for uh, continuing the feeding operations in the county. Currently we're doing about 50,000 meals per week in Orange County that are being distributed and we're seeing about a four to 5,000 meal per week increase. So every week we're seeing an additional four to 5,000 meals per week that are needed in our community. So the Guard is providing very critical support to our community or will be providing critical support to our community to support that effort of continuing to feed the food insecure in Orange County. Along that same mission line, we're preparing for it to increase that operation, so that will uh, the guard will be providing support for bulk feeding operations. Currently, we're doing that once, about once per week, with the North Carolina Food Bank, and we're seeing anywhere from five to six hundred vehicles uh, per day come through those in a one one site location. So the guard will be providing much needed logistical support in organizing that site for efficiency and effectiveness as well as providing logistical support to support the actual produce or product that is being distributed there. Uh, so my experience 22 years in emergency management at a local level, um, I've worked hand in hand with the Guard in, on numerous deployments, most of them in hurricanes. And the Guard is an effic efficient, effective, and organized force uh, that we can, local emergency managers can request and pull upon, you know, and, and have a solid, sound, and consistent form of support in our local communities. So what really makes the Guard special here are our citizen soldiers. One, uh, there, are, there are Guardsmen but they're also residents of North Carolina and so they feel the connection to the citizens that they're serving, the residents that they're serving, just like we do in local emergency management. The added benefit and the skill set they bring to the table is discipline and organization. In a time of crisis, that's one of the most important things we can have and what appears to be a chaotic world is to bring some organization and stability and consistency and the Guard is one of the best places to get that resource and the fastest. It can take quite a bit of time to mobilize uh, effective volunteer resources and keep them consistent and orga organized to be as efficient as possible. In a growing incident like COVID and particularly all the challenges that come with that, we have to have a support mechanism that is both efficient and effective but also flexible. And uh, while volunteers provide a very important role and we're using a lot of volunteers in a lot of our efforts, there are some areas like supply chain of logistics and feeding operations that we really need to do with precision and consistency and accuracy in order to make the, the process much more efficient in the long run to our community. And the goal is to support the community uh, first and foremost, and that also means saving as many lives as possible, whether that be from infection from COVID or the healthcare workers to protect them so we can, can maintain our critical infrastructure of healthcare, or unfortunately that may mean uh, providing food for people who have no other means to get it. 
I think the relationship, and we always pride ourselves in emergency management, 90% of what we do is relationship building. And 90% of what we do in a disaster is leveraging those relationships that are built. Um, so the strong relationship that state emergency management was formed with state National Guard and thus local emergency management with National Guard as well, it, it's, it's a leverage of a relationship that we've had for many, many, many years. And we, know, we have known how to apply that force or that resource appropriately in any other disaster. Uh, we're leveraging a lot of what we normally do for any other disaster in COVID response in a lot of areas. The difference is, is how, at a tactical level, how do we do that with ensuring social distancing and some of the normal practices, and that's where the, the flexibility really comes in. Um, so having the Guard be consistent and organized and key flexible that we are having to change how we perhaps do sheltering or bulk feeding operations. We're not able to bring people to one congregate location to provide hot meals in you know, a large setting. We need to really flex that and do uh, more drive-through operations where the guard, I think, is positioned and logistically can support big bulk operations. Um, I think that's just a normal a conduit and a normal carry on from the relationship we've built for years on hurricane after hurricane and incident after incident. So, if it wasn't for the guard, they wouldn't be able to. We wouldn't be able to release those critical resources back to the jobs we, you know, those really essential healthcare frontline workers. The guard is replacing those people so they can focus on providing direct frontline care. Okay, my name's Chase Boozer. I'm. Uh, 13 Juliet, which is a fire direction specialist, and I'm part of the 5th of the 113th Field Artillery Unit. I'm helping county officials with logistics of PPE to local hospitals and environments around the county. So I got a call yesterday saying I needed, uh, I needed to come to the Armory for state active duty orders. Uh, we came in, we drove down here to help with the uh, local teams to pass out PPE equipment. Initially I was nervous about finally leaving my house after being in my house for the last month, but I knew this was a good cause and I'm going to be helping people out uh, switching over to just staying at home and being a student to uh, being part of the National Guard. So I'm a graduating senior at NC State and I uh, had to let all my professors know that uh, I was be uh, getting activated for this and so they were very helpful in uh, allowing me to hold off on some of my exams or rescheduling exams which is uh, extremely important for me to be able to complete school and while still uh, serving on state active duty. It's tough, you know, stressful at times thinking about what you have to do on the civilian world and still perform your duties here but it's, I manage, I'm just doing it for the uh, betterment of the community and uh, helping out uh, my neighbors and all that. I suppose it's my duty when I signed up to serve my area. I suppose I'm important because while the medical professionals are starting to become strained and they need extra help, you know, we're here to come relieve them or give support to those who may actually uh, become too overwhelmed with the current workload. I've been working with the emergency management here for the first day and they've been getting me up to speed on all the various tasks and uh, procedures I need to be completing for my day-to-day -day tasks. First day was just uh, movement to our location where we're going to be working for the next month, getting settled in as far as our roles. It's always in my head, my first deployment, I got pulled out of classes uh, after the second week to go on a deployment. So. After that experience, I'm always expecting the unexpected. I know as long as I have a, I'm working with the guard, I have to be ready for uh, anything that might come out.